Hi, my name is Nikki Emelike, CEO of Nisden College. Welcome to Centerpoint Africa with Nikki. We're here with an actor, a stuntman, extraordinaire, and he is here to talk to us about In the Creek. And can we welcome <laughs> Andrew McKenzie, please? <laughs> Hi, Andrew from Egypt. How are you? Hey, hey, all good. Great to be, great to be talking to you, Nikki. Wow, we're really glad to have you today. And um, I know you're filming at the moment. I'm, we're really happy that you had the chance to talk to us. So, um, tell us about in the creek. Um, and your position in regards to what you did with In the Creek, please. Okay, no problem. Actually, it's quite a funny story. Um, I originally, uh, obviously after speaking with Terilla Thompson, uh, the director, yeah. um, I flew out to Nigeria as the action director, uh, stunt coordinator, and that, that was what I thought I was coming to do. Um, and when I arrived at the airport in Lagos, um, a lot of the production guys, they were like, yeah, you, you, you're a good actor. We see you act a lot. And I kept on thinking, okay, why are they talking to me about acting? <laughs> and then Tarilla, after the first day I met him, we're sitting chatting. He's like, yeah, I have a little role. Uh, I wouldn't mind you playing. I think you'd be great for it. And I was like, yeah, okay, fantastic. I thought, yeah, give me one or two lines and I'll be, yeah, it's great. And then he told me the parts, and obviously I've read the script. I was like, but Tarilla, <laughs> I'm like one of the main guys that gets kidnapped. So that's how we started. But I mean, yeah, we, we really had a good time. I, I, I've, I've filmed all over the world, obviously. Um, that actually just had a revolution. Uh, it was round about the time of the Arab Spring. Um, so I'd just gone back to South Africa. Um, I, I was actually thinking of having a um, uh, my agent came up to me with this job in Nigeria and um, I thought wow you know that's one place I've never been and I'd love to go so I headed on up there and wow I mean it was it was really it was something special it totally I mean I, I wasn't prepared for it at all I, I, I knew nothing about um, about the country itself I knew about the militants etc etc but that was about it and we literally arrived we traveled up to Bielsa State um, where everyone said, oh, you can't go to Bayelsa place, it's not too safe, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. Um, I mean, I love, you know, the, the, the people were so friendly to me. Um, Great. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the, the first day I arrived there, you know, we, we made a lot of friends and it was really, I mean, it was super. We, we, we did have a good time, but it was very, it was very taxing, very, very difficult shoot. Um, wasn't easy at all, especially for Tarilla. Um, you know, he had to bring people from all over the world together. Um, to get us all involved and get us all to work together. Um, I don't think anything on the scale had been done in Nigeria at the time. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was a hell of a thing. And, and we, we, had, we had a lot of fun, a lot of difficulties. Wow. Um, obviously, shooting in the jungles in Bielsa is, uh, you know, this is not something that's super easy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the easiest shoot, but we, we really had a good time. And me and Tarilla, you know, we, we really got on really well. Um, I play a character, obviously, I'm not going to give the story away, but I uh, play a character called Carriga. Um, I'm one of the well. I'm one of the um, <clears throat> the oil tycoons who actually gets kidnapped. Wow. Um, so uh, the the DRP um, the the DRP Nikolai Kirasov. I mean, he had the hardest time because we had so many scenes uh, with Tarilla and I, like um, shots where I am whiter than a snow bear, and uh, Tarilla obviously is. <laughs> Very, very dark, yeah. and the two of us next to each other, I like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, there's some trials, but uh, we really did have a good time. We, 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 did, some, we did some really, really nice stuff. Um, obviously, I was acting and I was uh, directing some of the action. Wow. Uh, we had really great, great, great guys from Nigeria. Uh, I've actually, the friends I made there, that's... Uh, years later, we still stay in contact, still chat, wow. um, and you know they really, they really looked after me there. Wow, um, we knew that this film was a big budget film. Uh, well, I lost. Yeah, you. can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? 
It's not been here now. Okay, yeah. thank you. We know that this was a big budget film and um, tell us in depth about your character. Um, what was the character called again? Did you say Tarila? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the character's name is Araga. Yeah. Um, I'm actually in the story, I'm, I'm married to Amatola, who okay. plays uh, Desai. Um, and uh, look, obviously there, there's, there's some twists in the story that I, I shouldn't talk about, but I get kidnapped <laughs> and I get held by mountains. Um, <laughs> okay. And it was actually quite funny on, on one of the first or second. So before I came to Nigeria, they, uh, in South Africa, they made me take these malaria tablets. Which oh, actually, okay. if I'd known when I was in Nigeria that these are a waste of time, uh, the <laughs> Nigerians took it off to fine. Yeah. Um, and they gave me these ulcers in my mouth. So now I've been kidnapped and I'm being held in the jungle, uh, wow. obviously for weeks on end. And in the story, like the, there was one scene, and, and we actually have some still photos of this where I really look rough. It looks like we have the best makeup artists in the world. Wow. Um, and I look like I'm going for an Oscar. When you look at my <laughs> face, you look at the pain, et cetera, et cetera. And actually, I, was, I wasn't acting. Uh, I was, they, they told me I had jungle fever, which yeah. was, yeah, I mean, it was difficult. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're scared. Yeah, you're scared. well. <laughs> When I first, when I first arrived, I must say, when they took me to the jungle, um, it was something, it was different, but um, no, we went to one village, I can't remember what it was called, it was, um, you know, we went up the Niger River, I can't remember, for a few hours, whatever, and we arrive at this village, and as I'm walking, um, as I'm walking to the village, all the school kids come yeah. running outside, I mean, I have the most beautiful picture of wow. these tiny kids maybe three, four years old, running down the street, but like maybe 50 of them wow. shouting, oh, evil, oh, evil, oh. you know, shouting, white man, white man. And one of them grabbed me and hugged my leg. Wow. A picture of me holding their hands and walking down the street. And, you know, up until this time, obviously, yeah, I, I was, I'd been a little bit nervous about uh, what, what, what we're going to get into, what's going to happen. <laughs> got militants with us so it's it's quite interesting what's going on and with these kids they just broke the ice and from then on I mean, it, it was love wow um how did you play any stunt in the film as well was there any stunt uh, you can tell us a little bit about yeah i mean i didn't do any stunts personally um i mean they uh, they beat me up a few times yeah uh, but that's uh, that's <laughs> For me, as part of my character, but mm -hmm. I did I did coordinate a few stunts. Um, Nigeria has this great, great, great stunt guy, stunt coordinator. He is also a filmmaker now, I believe. Um, the, we called him Jack Leo, J Leo Uche, I think his name is. Oh, wow. And we had him and his stunt guys, these martial arts guys. And uh, you know, I worked with them a little while. And these guys had huge hearts. I mean, there was wow. stuff that we were doing that they'd never seen before. I, I bought a lot. I bought my my rigging, so we we're doing cables, people flying, stuff like this. And they were great. I did some training with Van Vicker, uh, one of the, one of the the main actors. Yeah. Um, and obviously he's. He's a very physical guy, so he picked up the fighting super, super quickly. I mean, he made wow. my life easy for me. It was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was really easy. Um, and I think we did some driving, some car chase scenes. We, we did some explosions, which were interesting because um, obviously it's, it's difficult to get the, the correct pyro and stuff like that that we use uh, on, on, in Western cinema. Yeah. Um, but in Nigeria, they, you know, they, they, they fish with dynamite. And I so we, we, had some, we had some interesting explosions. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we, we had, had some, did some good action. The Jet Leo and his boys, they, they were really good. I mean, these guys, I mean, I was putting them on cables and flying them through trees and things like this. And these guys, they were tough. They, they weren't really scared of anything. Anything I asked them to do, they could do. So wow. yeah, I mean, it, it was great. Um, um, I, I myself personally, um, didn't do many stunts. Um, okay. From what I can remember, I think uh, the militants beat me up a few times. And uh, I think Tarilla was a bit nervous to tell me this in the very beginning. But oh, okay. um, the more I yeah. spent in uh, Nigeria um, yeah. and the more we spent filming, I started to realize that some of the characters in the movie mm -hmm. were actually real militants. Yeah. Like, they were the real yeah. And um, um, I will never 
I'll, I'll never forget, we arrived on one location, um, which was at one of the oil fields. Okay. And uh, when we drove into this oil field, we could see the security, oh, and then there was, uh, there was a white over there. Uh, they they came running up to me. They're going like, uh, "Who are these people? Why are you with these people?" I'm like, "No, no, we're here to shoot." And they were horrified. They were like, "Wow!" I mean, they drive around with bodyguards and they change their routes. Um, I was with Nigerians, man. I mean, <laughs> I, they, they, we didn't have massive security like this. We we were going pretty much where we wanted to go. Wow. Um, and and I've, I mean, I was safe as houses. We, you know, we were really well looked after. Wow, I'm really happy that you really enjoyed filming um, you do know there's some um, a lot of politics when it comes to um, the actual story um, and the reason why Tarila took upon to do this particular story because it's about uh, the Niger Delta and all the um, areas in which that are being sorted hopefully that will be sorted out do you know about it can you tell us a little bit about the story um, if you're yeah. to know yeah that? yeah one one I Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. Obviously, um, it, it being, a, I'd read up a little bit about it before I went. Yeah. Um, and then obviously being there, you know, Tarilla, he's, he's a very, very smart guy. And they, they gave me lots of information. A lot of the guys that, that were with him, some of the militants, I mean, I became very good friends with a lot of these guys. Yeah. Um, and they, would, you know, they, they, they literally filled me in with exactly what was going on. And I mean, you know, obviously I don't, I'm, uh, it's not my job to be political, I'm, I'm an actor, but um, yeah. uh, you know, I feel for these people because I've been in Lagos, I've been through Abuja, looking at these places that have all the, these beautiful buildings and this wealth. And then I went to like, probably the, the richest in minerals oil area of Nigeria and you know it was it was a totally different uh, way of life which is you know um, obviously that's not for me to say hopefully the movie says it all um, you you know you, you don't always condone violence you, you can't really condone kidnappings etc etc but sometimes you do you do have to look at the other side. You can't always look at everything from one side. And, yeah. you know, um, when you put in situations, you, sometimes you're forced to do things. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's what, uh, I mean, this is a problem worldwide, actually. Oh. Not, not only in Nigeria. This, this, this is all over. If people just kind of took the time to try and understand what the other side, the opposition, what somebody different to you, what they're actually going through, maybe you could make things better because you, you'll understand more why they're in the situation. Not everyone wants to be a bad person. No, I don't think any, I, I don't think many people wake up in the morning and say, uh, okay, I want to go kidnap a white guy. I don't think uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the goal. Um, I think that probably prefer not to, to stay home with their I families, know. but sometimes you're pushed into positions and you know, this is how it is. And um, I think it's up to governments to look, to look after their people and all their people, not just some of them. Um, but you know, that's just my view and I, I'm South African. Um, yeah. uh, I'm proudly South African. I love my country. Um, but also, you know, we, we having lo lots of struggles over there. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the solution is not, is not easy, but know. Um, you know, let's, let's have people figure it out for themselves. Wow, um, I do know as well that you've been in the industry for 30 years and I would like yeah. you to tell us a little bit about, you know, your experience because I can say if you've been in something for 30 years, you must really enjoy it. So tell us a little bit about what you've been doing so, so far and um, so that we're able to know um, your history. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean... Uh... I got into stunts uh, kind of by fluke, actually. I'm, my, my mother was an opera singer, so I was in the theater my whole life from when I was very, very young. Uh, believe it or not, I was a professional ballet dancer. I okay. studied ballet. Um, I was also a martial artist, so it was quite weird growing up. You know, I had to be a ballet dancer and a fighter. <laughs> can, and, can I, can uh, I? Mel, <laughs> it's a country. It's quite a, can, quite a can weird thing. Can I interject thing. about <laughs> the ballet dancing? Did you enjoy doing the ballet dancing, actually? Did you enjoy it? 
Ja, weil auch kurz. I'm, uh, I'm a man with lots of beautiful women. <laughs> Who wouldn't enjoy it? Um, yes, uh, I mean, that, that, and, and I, that I was doing the ballet for the martial arts and I yeah. just started loving it, actually. And then uh, somebody asked me to come and do some sword fighting on a TV series uh, okay. 30 or so years ago. And I, I spent a day sword fighting with the guys and the stunt coordinator was like, do, do you actually want to come back and do some more? I was like, yeah, man, this is fun. This is playing. And I literally just slipped into it that way. And um, the, the more I did, the more I enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I was a, an assistant stunt coordinator for many years. I've, I've worked pretty much all over the world now. Um, I've been filming uh, the last the last 10 years. I've been doing a lot of filming in North Africa, in Egypt, Dubai, Lebanon. Um, I film in South Africa a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I do quite a lot. I've, I've started directing quite a bit now myself. Yeah. Um, obviously, after all these years, I have ideas of how I'd like to, like the movies I enjoy seeing and the action yeah. I enjoy. So I'm lucky that I'm able to start putting that uh onto film and producers are allowing me to do it, directors are allowing me to to do what I want. Oh. I pretty much do everything. I, I fight, I wow. do rigging, I do explosions, I crash cars. I'm a car fanatic, by the way. Oh. I love cars, yet I destroy cars almost every day of <laughs> every my life. Every day, oh, okay. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andrew, we're going to go on a short break um, and we'll get back to you um, as we go on a short break. Um, this is Centerpoint Africa with Nikki. We're getting back to Andrew, the stuntman, and hopefully we'll carry on with the conversation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nikki Emilike. Welcome to Centerpoint Africa with Nikki. I was earlier talking to Andrew McKenzie, the stuntman, and now I have the legendary actor, Paul Obazele, here with us. And I hope they're able to hear me. Hi, Paul, can you hear me? Hi, <laughs> how the... you doing, Nikki? I'm good, I can hear you. <laughs> you can hear me. Can you hear me as well, Andrew? Can you hear me? Yes. You can. I can hear you. Perfectly. Wow. So I, I'm about to talk to Paul about In the Creek. So Paul, um, please um, tell us about um, your character in In the Creek. My character um, <laughs> in the Creek. Um, I, I was a major, major in the Creek, major Igbinoba, um, the government, the government uh, man whose uh, assignment is given to queer all uh, rebelliousness yeah. and um, bring uh, checkmate up the region, bring them onto forceful submission to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And um, Major Ibinoba has to be, uh, happens to be the president's man, who by all means necessary must square every rebellion in that wow. region must guarantee safety for uh, expatriates, must safeguard the um, oil shore lines, uh, and um, protect the sovereignty and integrity of um, the Nigerian community in that area. Wow. That was his duty. So he was a ruthless, a ruthless um, soldier. Wow. Um, how did you find playing him? You know, did it affect you personally while playing him? No, I, at least it's a story I know. Is it, I know the Niger Delta story very well. And um, I also know the roles um, government government yes. played over time. The roles um, um, the oil companies have played. Yeah. I also know about uh, the degradation happening in that region. I know the suffering of um, the Niger Delta people. Um, and therefore, if um, a story must be told, 
and um, filmed, it must be filmed with utmost sincerity and um, characters must be played. I know of this uh, major, I studied him well. Um, a true soldier is um, a man who be believes in the sovereignty of the nation. And even when um, um, things are not going on well in the Niger Delta, he must defend federalism. And that was what he did. Even when he's from that region, yeah. he still stood as a professional student, soldier. He is. So it, it becomes um, a man torn in between what his profession is and his people. Yeah. But because he had a calling to defend a nation, he did it. And um, I, I know, I know, I battled with it, but um, truth be told, an actor is an actor. You're called out to do certain things, you do it. And um, I also remember somebody seeing the movie and he looked at me, he said, you're crazy. I said, I'm not. Yeah. I was told to, wow. to act and I acted and just, and that's just it. And, uh, but honestly, it was, um, it was deep. It was a um, touching um, duty has to be carried out. Yeah. And we did it. And I know the Nigerian army when they saw, when some of the um, seven officers saw the video and they saw the film, clips of the movie. Yeah. And somebody was saying, somebody said, yes, that's the, that's the true Nigerian soldier against all odds. Must defend the green, white, green. And that's it. Wow. So my, my, my mission was very simple. Query the, quite the opposition instill fear and discipline and do it. We did it. Wow, that was really great. How did you get on with Tarila Thompson, who was the director, and how was the atmosphere generally in um, where the, uh, all the actions were taking place? Okay, uh, Tarila is my colleague. <laughs> um, we've known ourselves for a very long time. Okay. Yeah, I've been in this profession since um, 1985. That's about... Uh, 30, 36, 36, 37 years. Wow. Now. And um, yeah, uh, it's an industry I've worked. Yeah. It's an industry I grew. I grew. Part of the people who grew, not even so I understand it. And therefore, he happens to be a colleague who is um, tenacious in his, um, in his disposition, yeah. a wonderful writer, a, a wonderful director, and also a wonderful actor. And um, by the time the story came across, yeah, I saw I saw the passion in his writing. Writing, I saw the reading in yeah. his writing, uh, and therefore it became a um, imperative for me to to pick it up and say, okay, let me interpret this. And I also knew very well. Most of the time, we would sit down, and I would tell him, this is not possible. This is possible. His flexibility was uh, good enough for us to be able to achieve what we achieved. Wow. Um, I, I remember when we got to South Africa and um, we were shooting. Yeah. And uh, the words he will come and say, I need it sticking, very stained. I say, how stained? He will tell me um, a very decisive, deadly thing. I said, okay. So it was, um, we discussed characterization a lot and it worked. And also working with, um, uh, by the time they told me about Andre, I said, okay. Yeah. Let me see, let me see this man. And I was watching for my father. I just laughed. I said, I told them, they said, you're going to crook up my, my, some of my stunts. I said, no, I would not. <laughs> I would do what I have to do. I'll do it. We had a fight, myself and Tarila. Wow. We had a fight. And I told him, yeah, I told him I was going to beat him up. You got <laughs> <laughs> I told him. I, I've, been, I've been willing to do that for a very long time. We've so been willing to I do had that. The and I did, yes, I did in the film. I beat him up in the film. <laughs> it was all acting. And he fell for it. But I was happy I did it. <laughs> and and, um, and um, uh, the coordination was good. Great coordination from the stunts angle. And um, I also uh, remember that back and front, yeah. South Africa, London, we came back again. Yeah, the the Tarila I know is a Tarila that wants um, things very very perfect. Yes. So by the time we finish, he comes back to say no. Um, uh, professionals watch this; uh, they will tell you they they said no. Like most of the helicopter chases and all those things, they said no. Yeah. We have to reshoot. It's okay. We're going in back there. We'll do it. And um, wow. it was just fun working with him. Fun working with somebody who has a large heart who will not settle for less. 
and um, would not want to take uh, the viewers, his, his fan base, for granted. Uh, would not want to play with the intelligence of people who watch um, and who are willing to watch his movies. Yeah. And therefore, he has to up the game, and which he did successfully well. Wow. Um, I also want to ask you about um, the Niger Delta situation. Um, what is your take about it? And, um, and what do you think the, the movie, would it have impact with um, the people that were actually within this um, situation? What do you think about it? Now, if you, if you have visited Niger Delta any yeah. time of your life, you will understand yeah. how pathetic they live. You understand the empathy attached to this. And uh, therefore, by all means necessary, this film, part of the reason why somebody like me uh, came on board yeah. is because of the fact that direct proceeds, uh, proceeds from this film are going back to the community. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the agreements we have. Yes. And um, by so doing, I, I decided to join in the marketing of yeah. the movie, trying to see how we can recoup um, the heavy spending. And um, in, in the process, we have decided to embark on private viewership. We have decided to bring in some set of people to make it very, very possible that we give back to Niger Delta, the communities that allowed us uh, to shoot uh, um, in, in their regions, the community that guaranteed and gave us uh, um, security, as it were. Uh, uh, Niger Delta is a very volatile place. Yeah. Let us not mince that. It is very, very volatile. It is very, very dead because of the fact that somebody is playing a mind game yeah. with a set of people who have the rights to live peacefully. So it becomes um, a failure from the side of the government. I'm not hiding my mouth to say it. I'll say it anytime. Because if um, uh, a government of a people, they, are, they, are really, they really believe in the, the sovereignty and integrity of those set of people, they will yeah. give them a better livelihood and a better living condition. Be that as it may, like I said, we've gotten involved with marketing and we're doing it. And um, uh, for example, we are talking with um, 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 marketing outfit, distribution outfit, yeah. and uh, we've gotten, we've gotten. Uh, so many people have come to talk to us, but right now we are talking to to B -Z to see what we can do. And if um, B -Z is uh, ready to. Um, go on with what we have said, yeah. then we'll deal with, we'll deal with them. Um, uh, the, the movie called In the Creek is a heavy duty movie. Okay. It's a movie that in the next 10 years, people will make a reference to yes. it. We've come this long, we've done all the perfect things we have to do. It's a movie I can beat my hand on my chest to say yes, perfectly executed. I'm not ashamed of the movie. I know the movie can stand the test of time can compete anywhere that i know we've seen it professionals are coming yes. cinema owners are coming to see it they are offering us we are telling them no that is not what we want yes. but primarily primarily because of the fact that we have a great community in the yeah. niger delta we want to look after and that is the passion of tarila comes in and that is what we are going to stick to as actors as um, uh, creative people, as um, artists that we are, mm -hmm. to support a movement that will give birth to a new dawn in the Niger Delta region. Wow. Well, thank you, Paul. I need to actually go to um, Andrew, the stuntman, and ask him some couple of questions. Andrew, okay. just wanted to ask you, I know you're on the set right now, yeah, and um, and there's a movie you're doing at the moment. Is there any how you can tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> um, <laughs> Just a yeah, little, I'm, a I'm snippet of it. I can tell you a, a little bit about it. Um, yeah. uh, we're basically filming a movie called 1919. Um, okay. It's about the revolution um, in uh, Egypt uh, yeah. between the Egyptians and the British. Um, yeah, and um, it, it will be one of the big movies of Egypt next year, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, also, lots of international people coming in. And yeah, I mean, we're doing some very, very big stuff here. It's, uh, you know, it's one of these um, um, kind of like, like where Braveheart was the big movie for, um, for the Scots. Um, and we, we had another Mel Gibson movie with, in the UK, I mean, in America. Yeah. 
And this is like this is basically about about the, the revolution when Egypt try try to pull away from the UK. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, we do as I say, we're doing some big stuff, some big big action scenes. I have stunned people from all over the world here working with us. Obviously, it's very difficult during COVID, um, you know, to have, get people to travel. But thankfully, we have. Uh, you know where we call we we safe on the sets here, where we we have systems in place. Yeah. So that side has been difficult, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm doing some nice stuff. I can't talk too much about what we're doing, <laughs> but yeah, we're doing some some very very big stuff at the moment. Thank God. Wow, it seems like you always get involved with this kind of uh, movement. You know, what actually inspires you when you say, um, like for instance, you're in, in the creek, you know, I know you did tell us a little bit about it. So what inspires you to get into these particular roles and, and want to work with like Tarula Thompson, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a bit typecast. Uh, in the Creek is maybe the the only, I think maybe one of the only movies I've ever filmed that I survived. Wow. Most movies, are, they, they kill me. <laughs> I'm a typecast. I, I very rarely get to play the lover, although I, I was a little bit of a lover in the Creek. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> and I survived the movie. The end of the movie, I'm still alive, which uh, has never happened to me before. I'm, all the movies I make, all the roles I play, for so, I, I don't know, I, I think I look like Prince Charming, but they <laughs> seem to think I, I look like a monster. So for some reason, I'm always the bad guy and I always get killed. <laughs> but um, but I must admit, Tarilla was something interesting to me. I, I, I didn't know much about him before I went to Nigeria. Um, yeah. Obviously, I spoke with my agent and then I, I read up on him and I read up on some of the other actors. Um, and I was very interested to see, because obviously I'm, uh, I'm, I know I'm white, but to me, yeah. I'm African. I've lived in Africa my entire life, and uh, I, I, I love I love Africa for sure. Yeah. Um, and you know, be, we're, being in South Africa, being in Zimbabwe, being uh, in Egypt, um, I've, I've been pretty much all over Africa, except I've never been in Nigeria. Nigeria's obviously got a huge, huge, huge film uh, yeah. industry, film following. So yeah, that, that side of it interested me. Um, and I must admit, I, I was I was very very impressed with the understanding, um, and with how passionate all the actors are. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, it, it was hard to work out who was a real militant and who was an actor, because oh, okay. these guys, you know, they 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 live their parts, which is amazing. Um, I mean, it's. Yeah, it's. A, I can remember doing a few scenes with Tarilla where yeah. um, him and me, like, uh, there, there's a few scenes we do when, when they have captured me. Um, and him and I, like, uh, we, we really got into the zone where uh, I, I felt where he was coming from. It, it was, it, 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 it felt real. It felt like I was really in this. And I mean, this, you don't often find this uh, on, on that many movies, working with people that you're not that familiar with. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the passion of the actors was something, I mean, it was something pretty special. Like, uh, the, it seemed that everyone, on, especially on this job, this was no easy job. Yeah. Um, I'm, we shoot where we shoot. We have trailers. We have caravans. We have people looking after us all day. Very rarely do we get uncomfortable. Um, this 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 movie it's uncomfortable. We're filming in the jungle. We're not filming on a set with a few pot plants. This is in the jungle. You have insects. You have animals. You have uh, the the weather. The heat. snakes. Massive snakes. We have crocodiles. Oh, you have wow. yeah. But the thing is, everybody <laughs> still went there and everyone still worked. I mean, it wasn't like you you sit and you're complaining, ah, I'm too hot, ah, I'm uncomfortable, the mosquitoes are eating me. We <laughs> just went there and we did it. Um, and that is from the biggest actor to the, the, the smallest person on set. Everybody was kind of passionate about what they were doing, which was, I mean, was really amazing. And that's a testament to Tarilla. He, he was able to pull a lot of people together obviously the, the 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 few europeans that were with me when i was there shooting mm -hmm. you know we, we're used to being looked after we used to being cuddled and hugged and uh, so you know in the middle of uh, all these battles we could you know we had to carry we had to all adapt and it was very interesting in what what we got out of it um 
and yeah, I mean, uh, from what I can remember, we I, I think we've done some really great stuff. Uh, Tarilla wow. sent me a few rushes. I've seen some of the stuff, and the picture looks great. Um, and the acting, you know, the acting is really, really good. It, I mean, I'm I'm very, very impressed with with what what, what we did. Wow. Right. This is the question to thank you so much, Andrew, the smart man. Let me just go to Paul Obazile right now to ask him some few couple of questions. Um, um, Paul, I know you've talked about how passionate you were about this movie, but again, uh, what made you, what inspired you to take this role? Um, because, you know, there must be a part way that just gives you the decision making aspect for you to say, yeah, this is the actual film for me in the creek. So, what made you um, take the role? I'm trying. I'm trying to fix up something. My battery is running down. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just trying to fix it. Yeah, go come come again with it. Just yeah. Please. What made you choose the role, and what inspired you to choose this particular role? Um, because um, I know you've been one of my favorite actors, um, and we've known yeah. you as a Nigerian <laughs> actor. You're a very popular Nigerian actor. So, what made you choose In the Creek? No, no, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't choose the role. Yes. Uh, there were casting directors that were there, okay. and lots of names came out, and lots of people went for audition. I did, I did not know, but recommendations came in, and they said, no, go look for Paul. Yeah. He will deliver this well. And when, when they brought in the script, I read it. I said, okay, I love this, and I asked a question. Yeah. Would you let me interpret it the way you want me, or you give me a characterization? Yeah. And they give me a characterization. So, and I said, okay, I will not jump into the movie. I'm going to get into the barracks, you know? And I went into the barracks. I actually had to hang out with my military friends. Wow. I went in the, yeah, I went into Bonnet Camp for one month. I did that. I watched their dreams. I watched the way officers talk. I watched the way they give directives out. I watched the way instructions that came in and how you must carry out an order given to you to the later. There is no excuse you cannot fail. You understand it? I watched all those things. I imbibed them. And I chose somebody, a very close friend's character yeah. in the in the picture. I chose it and imbibed it. Yeah. I said I was going to play him out. And I did that. He's a, he's, a, he's a major general today in the Nigerian army. Yeah. And I played him out very well. And I remember very, very well when he saw clips of it, he was like, Paul, are you crazy? <laughs> this is good. And I laughed. I said, yes, I came, I understood you. And I played it out, you know. And um, uh, the, the, it, it is, it is it, it, the script was, um, was arresting. Mm -hmm. They, they gave me the script, I got arrested, and I needed to play. So what I had to do as at that time was to um, uh, get um, get the script to, to I imbibe myself in the script, yeah. get the script to, to get into me, um, possess me, let me use that word. Okay. Possess me. And um, yes, yeah. I, I had to go into this one month thing. Yeah. I, I had to, I left a set, I just finished a set, and I, I tried to get out of the, the characterization, get away from the previous set, and yeah. did this. So, Tarila, Sake, and uh, some other consultants in this um, uh, movie, that's Kingsley, Okoro, yeah. and Co. They were very, very patient waiting. And when they came in, the first delivery, the song. In fact, I remember. I remember one outing in South Africa. Yeah. Somebody got um, agitated. Yeah. My stairs to the person. Yeah. You know, it, uh, um, um was there. It was a bug thing, and we we're talking. Yeah. And um, I was talking thinly to the person, and yeah. all the jokes that came in, there was no smile. My eyes were locked. Wow. And the guy just stood up. He said no that they should tell me is a movie. And I replied him, they should tell him I'm a character. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're shooting halfway, they had to cut. Yeah. And I remember very well, Kinsley Ogoro said, freeze. So yeah. I stayed. That's a film, a film language. I stayed, I refused to move from my position. I refused to change my stares. I was staring at him and yeah. he panicked. 
you know wow. and walked away they called him back i was still like that wow. you know and we finished shooting tarot i went and told him <laughs> that is what film is all about and that's why we pulled him in mm. and i laughed i walked away i as at that time i just said okay paul you're doing well and at the end of the shoot that day i got a, a bottle of drink yeah i told them give to him courtesy paul yeah we're just acting a movie and he said <laughs> whoa that was too intense i say if you get into character you do not want to get out of character it becomes difficult for you to get into your point one again yeah. and as at that time that was what i was doing and um wow. Tell you the truth, <laughs> a lot of understudy went into this. Thank and we did it well. Thank you very, very much, Paul Obazile, the legendary Paul Obazile. Um, it's been an honor to have you on this program. Um, we just really enjoyed um, talking to you about In the Creek and your passion in regards to what you do. And about 36 years you've been on this, so thank you so much. We also want to thank Andrew the Stuntman, the actor for In the Creek as well. Um, the legendary um, Stuntman um, who's graced this occasion for us. And I say thank you so much for honoring and being present here. Um, um, we're thank saying you. thank you so so much. Um, Center Point Africa is actually, you know, saying um, when you come, hopefully, to the UK when the opening of the UK um, film is out, then we're able to done it to sort it out. Anyway, welcome to Center Point Africa. We've just finished talking to Tarila Thompson. And also, we talked to two gentlemen, um, Paula Bazele and also Andrew. Um, Centerpoint Africa, welcome, Nikki Emilike. Thank you.